You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey you guys and gals, and Eric here for Drake Wing Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of After Class, Coach Gill's Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> okay. You didn't wake up, so I, well, shook your shoulder like your life depended on it. Having a nightmare? I'm not sure. I see. I'm sorry about the sudden wake-up. I panicked. It's okay. Well, what time is it? Early enough to stay for a while, but late enough to get some more sleep. Has it really been that long? Yeah. I feel like I just fell asleep, and the next moment I'm awake. I feel so disoriented. You might want to wash your face and all. I'll do that. I wake the others up so we can make sure we have all our stuff before leaving for home. Good idea. <clears throat> Finished washing your face and brushing your teeth, you decided to sit down on a chair by the terrace to enjoy the fresh air. The fresh morning mountain... To get, the fresh morning... Mountain? The fresh morning mountain air to get rid of whatever you had in your mind. You didn't know how to explain it, but you could taste something in your mouth when you sat outside. It tasted like dew. The sky was still dark, and your body clock told you it wasn't the time to be awake. Thanks to that, to, thanks to that, you let out the biggest yawn you've ever done in a while. Be careful, or you might ac accidentally inhale some bugs. Hearing that, you quickly covered your mouth with your hands. Mark responded with a mock mocking chuckle. What the hell, Mark? It's just fun teasing you. You and Coach Gill are the same. What? I'm not the same as that pervert coach. I mean the teasing part, but okay. You two enjoy teasing me too much. Not my fault that your reaction is fun to watch when I tease you. Hm. What are you doing out here? Just want to get outside for a bit, uh, for fresh air. Right. You get gr getting great at lying, but it takes more to lie to me. And I know you're not the kind of person who would just go outside for fresh air. Just had something weird happen to me earlier. Oh, mind telling your best friend? Since when? Since I declared it. Now spill it. So, Coach Gill said I was moaning. Gross! If it's something you do with Coach Gill in private, I don't want to hear it. What? I haven't finished! Fine. As I was saying, Coach Gill said I was moaning and kicking in my sleep. So he woke me up by shaking my shoulders, so I'm still a bit disoriented. I think I had a nightmare, but I don't remember anything about it. Although, when I woke up, I was running out of breath and drenched in sweat. It also felt like, a, like I tasted metal. I thought I was bleeding, but no blood when I brushed my teeth. That certainly was a hell of a nightmare. Even though you don't remember it. It was just weird is all, but I'm sure it was nothing. Maybe so. Well, you can't help but can't help with something like that. But if you have another nightmare and you remember it, let me know. I will. I'm gonna head back inside, check if I have everything before going home. Yeah, I should do that too. It's getting cold out here. Yep. Thanks for listening, Mark. It was barely anything, but no problem. Wait, you know, water time. Coffee time on me. Oh, you're back. What took you so long? I went, to, I went to talk with Mark for a bit. Anything interesting? Not much. Just him teasing me like always. And apparently I'm his best friend now. <laughs> you don't sound thrilled about it. Yeah, no. I mean, it's great, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. Treasure it. Don't take it for granted. You don't know when you'll lose them. I suppose so. I'm going to pack all my things. You probably want to do it now, Henry. I have mine all packed up, but I'll double check. Is everyone ready? You looked around, but you couldn't find An couldn't find Anders anywhere in your room. Um, I don't see Anders. Where is he? He's out. He's outside. He's outside. Says so he needs some fresh air. And quote, just head out when you guys are done. End quote. I see. We can head out now then. The others were checking out with Mark, so you decided to head out first. You saw Anders sitting on the wooden bench by the miniature garden on the yard. He was drinking a cup of tea. Maybe he got it from the staff. Oh, hey, Anders. Oh, Henry, you guys, <clears throat> you guys ready to leave? Yeah, they're checking out right now. I see. Listen, about something I said. Yeah, I just I said about yesterday. Yeah, what what about it? It's a, man. I can't believe we gotta leave so soon. Maybe we can come here again on some on some time when we're all free, like a proper vacation. Meh. Nah. Oh, you guys ready to leave? No, I'm not ready, but I have to. Ha! Maybe you guys can visit again sometime. If we have a free time, that is. 
We'll be looking forward to it. You guys can put all your items in the car, and we'll leave once you're once we're done doing that. After it was all done, Tora headed inside the car. Like before, you sat in the front passenger seat while the rest of you just squeezed into the back row. The car ride to the bus stop was a lovely one. Everyone sang along to one popular song that came up in on Tora's radio. You didn't know the song, though, so you just smiled awkwardly, but at least it was fun seeing them having fun. But that wasn't all of it. You noticed Anders was looking somewhat uncomfortable. He was about to tell you something, but it got interrupted. Could that be the reason? Maybe you should ask him after you guys arrived in Highwell. <clears throat> you arrived at the bus stop safely, and by the time you got there, the bus was ready to depart. You said your goodbye to Tora, and he left quickly, saying that his old man needed him. It was sad leaving Tora so soon, but you didn't let that get you get you all bummed out, especially you especially it wasn't actually a forever goodbye. You had a plan of coming back here in the near future, after all. Coach Gill just decided to sit next to you, and no one complained. For once, maybe their energy was spent for singing along to a dozens of songs. Like no, probably not. Or maybe they were just too tired from sleeping too little. Really leaving, huh? Yeah, it feels too short. It is too short. Well, in any case, I'm not excited about the ride home, so I'll be getting some more naps. Good idea. I'm going to do that, too. See you in a bit, Henry. Mm-hmm. Before you started getting ready to doze off, Coach Gill looked around the bus. You were wondering why he did that, but the answer you were looking for came almost immediately. He wrapped his arm around your neck and pulled you close to him so that you would rest your head on his shoulder. You looked at him, and he replied with a gentle smile on his face. It almost made your heart melt. He squeezed your shoulder as he leaned in closer. You left, he let out a relieved sigh and nuzzled against him before slowly closing your eyes. Hey, wake up, Henry. We're here. You woke up to the sound of Coach Gill calling out to you. For the first time ever, you felt like you felt like you actually slept. No weird dreams or anything that you'd forgotten. It was nice. You stretched you stretched your muscles with with both your arms and with both your arms in the air, accompanied with a long grunt. That must have felt good. A little bit. <laughs> Come on, let's get off the bus. Okay. Once you grabbed your backpack and some other small bags, you got off the bus. Back to this place! I'm just glad we got here. Waterfront was nice, but Highwell feels like home. As much as I don't like this place, but yeah, it does feel like home. Sadly, though, my home isn't here. I still have another bus ride, and I still have another bus to ride before I reach home. Oh, yeah, some of us live in the city. Thankfully, I decided to bring my stuff so I can get ready for teaching at Henry's place. Can't afford another bus trip. My ass cheeks are sore. We don't want to hear that from you, bonk. <laughs> bonk. Ouch, you didn't have to do that. Well, I guess it's just Anders, Lars, and me, then. Oh, Lars, too? Yeah. Well, the bus is here, so we're gonna go now. You guys might want to do the same. See you later, Henry, if you don't if you don't decide to skip school today. Uh, don't do that. Do you pay my tuition? I don't think you do. Joke it, you don't, but I have, my, I have attendance to worry about. Mark and the others took the bus home. You, Mr. Parker, and Coach Gill decided to walk home. Wait, did Lars move out? Last time I saw him, he lives around here. Ha! Huh, I think so. I've seen him here too uh, often, too. He's usually standing in this building, right? Mm-hmm. That's how I met him. That's, when I, that's where he was when I first met him. Oh, tell me more. I woke up late, so I was rushing. I didn't realize Lars was around, so I bumped into him because I was running to school. He was scary. Ha! Huh, he does look intimidating, but he's a softie inside. Well, at least until he gets angry. Bad temper. Yeah, I noticed that, too. This is where we part ways. Sure is. Henry. Yeah? If Gil does something funny, just let me know. What? <laughs> I'm sure he won't. He's been, ni he's been nice lately. Just in case. I will. Thanks, Mr. Parker. I'll take my leave now. Take care, both of you. See you later, Mr. Parker. Hmm. Wait. Huh? You have basketball practice today, don't you? Second yell. Coffee time. <coughs> <laughs> Blech. Oh god. My face hurts. Okay. I believe so. Yep, he does. I was wondering if you want to hang out after that. We can go out for walks and all that. Hmm, I'll think about it. Or maybe we can study for tomorrow. Study? You forgot about tomorrow's exam, didn't you? Crap. Looks like I'll need your help later, Mr. Parker. Great, I'll see you by the library later. 
Okay. I've been thinking about what Parker said. Uh, about what? Study it? No, what he said before that. You're not gonna rat me out, are you? If you plan on doing weird things, I will. Man, I just wanted to have some fun. We can have different kind of fun. Like what? Before unlocking the main door, you shrugged at him. Oh no, I got studying to worry about. As soon as you entered the living room, you noticed there was something weird in the house. It had a certain smell, faint but noticeable. Someone smoked here recently, or someone who smoked entered this house. He looked at Coach Gill, wondering if it was if it was only you who was aware of the smell lingering around the house, and he nodded. Not because you imagined the smell, but also but also he also noticed it. Stay here. I'll look around the house. Are you sure? I can help too. I know how to protect myself. It's easier for me to knock them down myself. He nodded and stood in the living room while Coach Gill walked slowly toward the hallway, opening each room with caution. Knock them down? Is the rumor Anders told me true? That Coach Gill is dangerous? I mean, knock them down if they're an intruder. I mean, that's a good thing. After opening all the doors with no result, he looked at the end of the hallway. There was only one place left. He went to the kitchen and you felt your heart beating faster the longer he stayed inside, praying that nothing would happen. God! Coach Gill? That couldn't be good. So you quickly ran toward the kitchen, only to find Coach Gill smiling from ear to ear. Your heartbeat rose higher, but not because you were scared. You were furious. Gah, I found nothing. In an instant, that worried look you had on your face was wiped off. A face that expressed annoyance and anger replaced it. What the hell? That wasn't funny. Hmm? I was, he I was here worried that something might have happened to you, and here you are pulling a prank on me. What a dick. Hmm. He staggered when he heard that from you, and he quickly apologized for what he did. I'm sorry, Henry. I just wanted to make things interesting and fun. But not like this. I, I know. I was wrong. I, I really am sorry. You put your hand on. You put your hand on the forehead. A long sigh escaped your mouth. It's fine. Never mind it. I, and I'm sorry. I just a bit cranky this morning. I think the lack of sleep finally caught up to me. It's okay. I'm gonna take a bath. Enjoy your bath, Henry. Sorry about earlier. It's okay, Coach Gill. And thanks. He smiled and walked off toward the living room. Finished taking the warm bath you deserved, you went back to your room and got dressed for the day. When it was done, you headed to the living room, where Coach Gill was lying down on a couch, swiping his finger left and right against the backlit screen. Like now, coffee time. Oh god. Taking your time in the bath was a good idea. Thanks to it, you managed to clear your mind and you were no longer angry at Coach Gill. You figured he was just having fun like usual, and you somewhat took it the wrong way. Hey, uh, Coach Gill, I'm done. Oh, already? Then it's my turn, then. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention that we have a new practice schedule. Hmm? We'll have basketball practice today, Wednesday and Friday. Oh, I see. I'll need to bring my uniform, then. Not needed, but it's recommended. All right, thanks for letting me know. No problem. Coach Gill grabbed his towel and headed to the bathroom. With snow in the living room, you relaxed yourself on the same couch where Coach Gill was lying down. Oh, I gotta charge my phone. On your way to charging your phone... His phone notification went off went off once, and it grabbed your attention. Followed with another notification. A and another one. Yet another one. Did something happen? Why did he get so many notifications? You wanted to take a look, but it felt like you were invading his privacy, so you decided to just plug in your phone and not do anything about the notifications. Hmm, it actually sounded so familiar. You even heard it once, your f once on your father's phone, although he wasn't too excited about that sound, and your mother made fun of him for weeks. Maybe it's going to be the same for Coach Gill. Let's not mention anything about it. It felt like almost half an hour had passed, and Coach Gill finally finished bathing. Your eyes were still focused on the TV, but you could hear that he was walking walking toward the living room. Oh, you're done. No, oh, shit, that's a big dick. <laughs> yeah, that's a big dick. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause that right there. Uh, I got a little bit of editing to do for that one. Alright, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and uh, check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate it. And thank you, girl, silver tier patron, Cade Silvermoon. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. We greatly appreciate your support. And thank you to our gold tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subscribing to our ultimate Patreon tier. And anyway, if you all want to get your names in the credits and get access to our not safe work videos, as little as $5. Anyway, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye